everyone, it's Julie and Mark here from RV Love. We've been getting a lot of questions about our recent RV rental experiences, and so we decided to put a video together answering frequently asked questions about renting an RV, so stay tuned. Welcome back everybody, Julia Mark here from RV Love and if you haven't already noticed RVing is hot right now and RV rentals are really hot. Our RV rental video to Florida that we put up just a few weeks ago has exploded in views so if you haven't seen that go over and check that out. Now we rented not one but two RVs over the course of a month in January, February earlier this year and we had so many great experiences and learned so much and there have been so many questions. RV Share has actually asked us to share some of the frequently asked questions that people have about renting an RVs. So if you've never rented an RV before, you've probably got at least one, two, five, or maybe even all of these questions. <laughs> Good chance. <laughs> and we've got a bunch of questions, so we're gonna have great details for you here in this video and then also in the blog post at rvlove.com. So the first question is, why rent an RV? The number one thing on people's minds right now is safety. We all want to travel, but we want to be safe. Everyone's been cooped up, we want to get out. What do you want to do? You're going to hit the road in an RV. And this year of all years is probably the best year ever to go renting an RV because all the other types of travel are really not as appealing as normal. A lot of right. people are not very interested in getting on an airplane or you're probably not interested in going to a hotel right now. And so we're taking a cruise. Yeah, we're definitely not taking a cruise. And right. even normal travel, even one of the big pieces of regular travel is going out to eat. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the things that are parts of regular travel are all restricted right now. But an RV is a way to get out and explore and have a great travel experience without any of the restrictions that are imposed on people because you're gonna bring your own food, you're gonna have your own bed, your own kitchen, your own bathroom, so you have a fully contained environment to right. go do all of your traveling and exploring. And it's, it's really a great time to get out with your family and travel. But many of you may have been thinking, you know, one day we're going to do an RV road trip and right. see America, and this is the time to do it. But safety and being able to contain your environment are very, very important. Well, and an RV right is now. the ultimate way to control your environment. Mm. It's, it's a really fantastic way to travel. And if you don't have an RV, then you can just rent an RV. And of course, with an RV, you can have your meals in a scenic location anywhere you choose. You can just pull over somewhere on the side of the road or mm. go to a scenic destination. You don't even have to go out to restaurants anymore. You can just pick you up, take out, or cook your own meals and go and enjoy it somewhere scenic. But even besides renting an RV to go on a vacation or to visit family, a lot of people are renting RVs right now as a second office mm -hmm. or for business trips. Instead of flying, they're going to take a rental RV to go on the business trips. If you have someone in your home that works in essential services or on the front line and you're wanting to keep them quarantined from the rest of the family, a lot of people have been renting an RV and putting that in the driveway to be able to accommodate them. Or if someone's become sick, whether that's with COVID or something else and you just want to keep them uh, safer and more uh, isolated from the rest of the family, uh, RVs are becoming very popular as your very own quarantine machine. Another reason you might want to rent an RV is to transport somebody if maybe they're not feeling well and they're needing to lay down mm -hmm. during that relocation that's a great thing to do in an RV. Yeah. Working on site sometimes if you're working right. on site somewhere whether that's a construction project or you're doing an assignment then having an RV there for that period of time instead of renting an apartment or a house. Right or maybe you're displaced from your regular home because it got damaged or there's other reason it's inhabitable you right. cannot use an RV for temporary storage and that could just be a travel trailer even if you don't have a vehicle to tow it some renters will actually drop off that travel trailer at the campground for right. you and maybe even hook it up for you so you just show up and you have that rental experience without having to learn how to tow and also people when all these things open back up people like to rent rvs to go to sporting events and do tailgating festivals and concerts as well mm. they can leave the rv for you so you're just basically using it as accommodation there on site so for us when we rented two rvs early Earlier this year there were a couple of reasons for that one is we were going to the Florida RV Super Show and rather than stay in a hotel and rent
rent a car. We thought, why don't we just stay in an RV on site so we can go and travel around the RV show. We prefer RVs anyway. Mm -hmm. And the second reason was we've been shopping around for RVs through so getting a second smaller RV and we wanted to try a few on for size. And so it may seem expensive to rent an RV, but when you think about the cost of RV ownership and the depreciation and the purchase price and the taxes and the maintenance and all of that, and what if you don't pick the right RV and you end up having to change or trade that in, that can really hurt your uh, wallet right there you can take a huge hit so yeah. an RV is a great way to be able to like try on different RVs for size and make sure it's going to be right for you right because there's nothing like spending a few days or maybe a week in an RV to really get a feel for things you do and don't like maybe it looks fine when you're doing a little quick tour at the RV dealership mm -hmm. but after a weekend you realize oh well the water pumps super loud or the beds really not that comfortable to sleep in after or all too or I'm too tall it. I hit my head on the air conditioning unit and I didn't have that problem with it too Julie tall. doesn't have <laughs> <laughs> but there's it's a really important part of an RV shopping experience uh, that yeah. we recommend to people often. Yeah, even as experienced RVers, we're amazed at how much we still learn from our RV rental experiences. You know, RV rental may also make a lot more sense if you don't plan to use it a lot. If you're just going mm. to use it once or twice a year for a couple of uh, vacations or trips, then by the time you calculate all of the related costs of RV ownership, that may not be worth it for you, especially if you don't have anywhere to store it. Especially if you don't have somewhere mm -hmm. to store it. Because storing yeah. it, maintaining it, the depreciation, taxes on the purchase, Financing. all those things can add up and you do the math. If you're only gonna go out a couple times a year, renting's probably a more cost-effective approach. And I think what's really nice about renting too is you get to try all different kinds of RVs, mm -hmm. whereas when you buy an RV, that's it. That's the one that you're having all of your travel experiences in. But if you wanna try, well, this time we're going to try a travel trailer, and next time we're going to try a Class C, and next time we're going to try a fifth wheel, or this time we're going to try an Airstream. You can just have completely different kinds of vacation experiences, which may be a better fit for depending on who's going on that vacation. Maybe it's just you and your spouse, or maybe it's your entire family. Maybe you'll bring parents along sometime pets so you can really mix up where are you going you know what's the weather going to be like and change the RV up depending on what's going to suit a particular type of RV vacation experience you're wanting to have so how much does it cost to rent an RV isn't it expensive well it depends on the type of RV you're renting and then also how long the shorter the term of the rental the higher the nightly rate but if mm. you rent for a week or rent for two weeks like we did those rates can come down substantially mm -hmm. and you can rent all any different type whether it's a small pop-up camper or maybe a class B van all the way up to really expensive luxury bus yeah. conversions. The bus conversions, we've seen them as high as $5,000 a night, but we've also seen RVs renting for under $100 a yes. night. So it really depends on what you're renting. Most RVs that people are going to rent are going to be ranging in that $100 a night range, but Absolutely. sometimes you might see $200 a night. It just depends on the RV you're going to rent. Then there are other variables like renting during the peak season versus the low season, what location or city you rent from, and just supply and demand. No matter what kind of other you're looking for or what age, what type, you're bound to find something to fit your budget. And when you think about how you would normally vacation, whether you fly in somewhere, uh, you might have hotel stays, you might have to rent a car, and then of course there's all of the eating out, and that's where things really start to add up. So mm. when you think about all of those expenses and add them up compared to the cost of an RV where everything's included, and then you can cook most of your, uh, you might eat out some, but you can cook a lot more meals in your RV. I think you'll find that the comparison is actually you know, pretty reasonable and sometimes even less expensive. So what kinds of RVs can you rent? And that really can run the gamut. You can rent something so simple as a pop-up camper, mm -hmm. or you can rent something like a multi-million dollar bus conversion that the rock stars travel in. The good news is you can rent pretty much any type of RV there is, someone's gonna be renting that. All right, you can see this Sunseeker over here. That's a typical Class C, but it has a nice big slide out, so that'd be roomy inside. Nice to rent an RV instead of going out in your tent. We had a huge storm here last night. I would be glad to be in an RV instead of in a tent. Oh, and here's a rental RV right here. This is one of those Cruise America RV rentals with the branding on the side. So this Winnebago View is a Class C that would be a popular type of RV you could rent. And here's a travel trailer. You might be choosing to rent a travel trailer, whether you have a vehicle that can tow it or if you're gonna have the person you rent it from drop it off for you. 
So this travel trailer here is actually a toy hauler. You can see the door on the back of the trailer that would drop down and form as a ramp so you can load toys into the back and bring all your big motorized toys along with you. You can also rent like a class A luxury diesel motorhome like this one or a fifth wheel. So you can see while I'm walking around here, there's pretty much every type of RV in this campground. And if you rent from an RV platform like RV Share, you can rent pretty much any one of these types of RVs. Maybe one with really bold paint like this one. <laughs> so if you've got deep pockets, you might even choose to rent something like this Prevo bus conversion. but. Be ready to spend some money if you're gonna rent something like that. So what's included when you rent an RV? That's really gonna depend on the owner and the particular RV. Some come fully equipped and some come pretty basic, but then you're paying to rent the other items uh, as part of the rental. So you might be driving to pick up the rental RV and you might bring some of your own things. You might bring your own sheets and pillows from home. You might bring some of your own dishware. Well, especially if you're local. Right. But a lot of rental RVs, you can rent it very basic mm -hmm. and then not have upcharges for the linens and the kitchen sets. And some would just include it in the rental price. Mm -hmm. But when we were renting in Florida, we had the linens and the kitchenware provided for us. Mm -hmm. Some may have an additional upcharge for running the generator and um, or provide a generator if it doesn't come with an right. onboard generator. Yeah. There's also patio mats, kit, uh, camping chairs, mm. bicycles, basically anything you could want or need, a barbecue, an RV specific GPS, all of those things you can add on to your rental. You get to choose. So make sure that you ask who you're renting the RV from, what's included and if there's an upcharge. Mm. But even things like an RV specific GPS, I mean, they can be a little expensive on a daily basis, but you could download an app like RV Trip Wizard that would be right. less expensive option for that with an RV safe GPS. But you know, I think it really depends on the rental and the unit and finding out what's available and what do they charge for it. So another common question is, will your regular insurance cover your RV rental? And in general, no. It's not like renting a car. Mm -hmm. Renting an RV is very different and so it most, more often than not, you will not be covered with your existing insurance policy mm -hmm. on an RV rental. Now, depending on where you rent it from, they may have RV rental insurance included in that mm -hmm. rental price. So the RV rental insurance is typically covered by the RV owner's policy, but mm -hmm. you can get additional coverage for you just if you want that extra peace of mind and security. If you're renting from a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, rental program like RV Share, then it is going to be covered within the uh, rental agreement. This protects the owners and the renters and is automatically included in the reservation. But do ask, check, and ask to see a copy of that insurance policy to make sure it's something that you're comfortable with, that if there is an incident, that you know how it's going to be covered and handled. So what if something breaks or the RV breaks down while you're renting the RV? We <laughs> all know that RVs have a reputation for having things break down. And even in our rental experience in Florida, we did have a couple things that broke. Most of them were pretty small. That yep. was something I could fix with a screwdriver and that was simple, but we did have one other issue with that- the shower. With the shower, but the, the company that we rented from came out and fixed that for us because we were still in the local area. Mm -hmm. And in, so if something does go wrong, the first step would be to reach out to the RV owner where you rented from because they may be able to walk you through how to do the repair yourself right. or be able to repair themselves if they're in the local area. But second step, they may have a really good contacts with local area dealers or mobile mechanics that mm -hmm. could help repair that for you faster because their existing relationships might get you in there faster for the repair. Very often roadside assistance is included in RV rental. So that's another question to ask. Is roadside assistance included? It's usually shown as an extra daily charge as a line item. Right. So you need to look at everything on the RV rental contract to see what you're being charged for. So next question is how many miles can you travel in a day? And this totally depends on the rental, but what we saw in our experiences with RV rentals is they were generally including about 100 miles per day. And if you're only on a short rental, that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you have a two-week rental like we did, that's an average miles per day, and we were able to drive 
a lot. We were able to drive mm -hmm. over a thousand miles and go on a big trip with the mm -hmm. RV during the time we had it. But be mindful of what their policies are because a lot of RV rental companies, if you go over the miles limit, it might be 10 cents a mile or even a dollar a mile on some RVs. So make, make sure you're reading up. the fine print on that because a dollar a mile would add up very quickly. But we've seen 100 to 150 miles a day is mm -hmm. pretty average as yeah. a range. But again, totally depends on the rentals. So now how do you rent an RV? And of course the easiest way to do that right now is online. RVing is hot. RV rentals are through the roof right now. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, there are a lot to choose from. There are literally thousands around the country in every state. Right. So go online. Some RV dealers may even rent out RVs, mm. especially if they are looking to sell you an RV. Now, the big RV rental companies like a Cruise America or a El Monte, the big right chains, here. those chains usually just rent a Class C motor on. That's the ones that are a van chassis with the cab over sleeping area and those are really popular for families and they're pretty easy to drive so mm -hmm. those are very common but when you use a platform like RV share a peer-to-peer -peer program yeah. then you can rent individuals RVs and mm -hmm. I think one of the advantages of that is that you're not going to be driving someone's billboard you know I don't you're not tagged as a renter a automatically tourist. yeah so when we rented ours we wanted to use a peer-to-peer -peer platform so we would have a non-branded RV and we rented a class B plus which is a relatively small van and we also mm -hmm. rented a smaller class C as well so we had that great experience with that but those rental RVs that you mostly see around national parks and there's really popular tourist attractions they're the ones that people really think of when you think of rental RV but mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be you and that was what was important to us when we rented RVs but the reason we like RV share is they've actually got the biggest range of RVs to rent from both in terms of the number and the types that you can rent from all around North America when you're searching online because it's through a platform that is a reputable platform and has worry-free offerings like insurance and other things built in like roadside, roadside assistance and all of those things to give you peace of mind to reduce any worries that you may have while you're traveling. There'll be rentals from individual small fleet owners from dealers. So it really is like Airbnb in that they're all rounded up in one place because you can browse and see all of the different kinds of RVs available in your area, the different types, the different prices, how many people they can accommodate, the different amenities, the different standards. You basically you can put in filters and narrow down to what kind of choices are going to be right for you and your travels. And there are other online platforms besides RV Share, but this is the only one that we have personal experience with and that we'd be able to comfortable recommending. So we're going to put all of the links down below to the RVs that we've rented, to the related blog posts and our RV rental experiences. Hope you get a chance to get out there this summer and rent an RV yourself. It really is a fun and amazing way to travel. So we hope this video has been helpful to you in answering a lot of the common questions related to renting RVs. If you have any questions at all, please put those in the comments section down below. We'll be happy to answer those for you. Mm -hmm. And until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the road. road.